Hey YouTube, what's up and welcome back to another exciting episode of Vintage Game Finder. It's your boy Nice Mazo 7. Uh, it's a very special episode for me, not only because I have more pickups to add to the collection, of course, uh, but I'm debuting uh, my nephew, uh, who's, I want to say new, but not really new to the retro scene. Uh, his name is uh, Romeo Retro, of course, and you probably heard about him in some of the Masterpiece uh, uh, retro installments that I've done recently, so let's go ahead and uh, give him a, a nice little applause here, virtual YouTube applause, and... Uh, he is here to help me out with the videos uh, for the time being. So here he is, Romeo Retro. Everybody say what's up. What's up, guys? It's been, and um, been a video. A video or two, yeah. We, we've done a couple of Masterpiece too. Retro installments, of course. Uh, if you haven't been watching, we've covered um, Elevator Action Returns, um, which was uh, a POW exclusive. Yeah, that was a great game. Yeah, it was. Everything and uh, before that, we did Sonic R, which was not... That awesome, but no. not that bad, I guess. I don't know. It was alright. It was, I guess. Alright, so we, we definitely have uh, some ground to cover with the pickups we have. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started with uh, what we picked up for the PS2. And uh, I'll go ahead and get my three out of the way. Uh, he has some as well, so uh, let's get to it. Uh, this one is a duplicate, but a duplicate... Uh, that's a little bit different because this one uh, featured a soundtrack disc and the one that I have, the only copy that I have, uh, did not. So uh, the game and title I'm referring to is Silent Hill 3 from Konami. Great game. Definitely. Um, and this is that uh, soundtrack disc that I was um, referring to before. The copy that I found in the wild did not have this. So I'm very happy to have an actual complete copy to this. Uh, I'm not, I mean, you guys already know I got, I got kids, so I can't really play these games, but I will find a happy home for it eventually, unless Romeo wants it, because he's into these. You know that? Not much? No, I played it already. It was a great game. I loved everything about it. It was like set in a carnival. Oh, okay. Set back in the carnival or something like that. I don't remember um, much of it. I was, I was very young when I played it. Pretty young, so. When that, I think that's the best way to play these uh, mature rated games is when you're yeah. young. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Okay, next I have another uh, duplicate. Um, this one I haven't played, but I've heard great, great things about. It. And I, uh, you know, unfortunately, my uh, well, not unfortunately, but it's bittersweet. I have more than enough games to uh, keep me occupied. So when I say that I haven't played it yet, it's not because I haven't wanted to. It's just I haven't gotten around to it because I have a lot of games that I need to play and, and catch up on. So uh, that game that I'm referring to of course is Zeno Saga episode 2 heard great things about that game I always wanted to try it yeah another yeah, RPG uh, this one uh, from the looks of it is from Namco and it's a two disc uh, game um, so hopefully I'll, I'll be able to check it out and, and if I like it I'll keep it and of course you know what happens when I don't I go ahead and find it a happy home of course so uh, the last uh, one that I will be showing is one that I'm definitely keeping for the for the collection. I love fighting games, uh, especially Street Fighter. And uh, this one reminds me of Street Fighter. Just let's just say, if, if Street Fighter had a baby with Samurai Showdown, it would be this Guilty Gear. Great game. And uh, what is it? Guilty Guilty Gear Isuka. Uh, so it could be another way of saying it. it's a remix for the original Guilty Gear or Guilty Gear X. And um, I'm very excited to play, especially because I'm looking at the back and uh, Sega is involved. Yes, Sega is involved in this game right here in the bottom. So, oh boy, yeah, right. uh, you know how I like Sega, so I'm I'm gonna go ahead and and very 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 excitingly I am going to go ahead and pop this in eventually. Uh, probably this week I'll go ahead and hook up my PS2 and I'll start playing it. So uh, Romeo, let's go ahead and show uh, them what you picked up. Alright, uh, we, the first up is, uh, Lagaya 2. Never, uh, really heard of it, but it seems like a fighter, or RPG. Yeah, um, one of those. Uh, okay. looks great. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a fun game to play. Unfortunately, some of these we find without manuals, which yeah. sucks, but... I was well, going to read the manual real quick to see what yeah. type of it. But. Well, a lot of times that that is the case. I mean, we, we all remember being that young and 
and just being excited and, and opening stuff up and you either lose the manual or you just chuck it yeah or you draw over it which which uh, is a common occurrence as well so yeah uh, I will be uh, looking out for that manual in, in case we do end up playing it and liking it so what else you got we got bloody roar 4 for the PlayStation 2 Ooh, that's a gem uh, that's a gem Looks like a great game. Yes. Uh, great fighter. For those of you that don't know too much about the series, Bloody War is basically um, a fighting game reminiscent of... Uh, this one does have the manual. Ooh, nice. Yeah, it's reminiscent of Tekken uh, or Virtual Fighter, but with the added plus that you could uh, become a mutant. So, uh, if I recall, you could become a lion. Uh, there's another guy that becomes yeah, a, a wolf. A wolf. A yeah, tiger. tiger. What else? Uh, I can't really tell what else there. Yeah, Some kind really of tell. demon. But yeah, I, I like that there's variety in fighting games. And that to me is another little unique uh, quirk for that game. And um, that's definitely staying in the collection. Definitely. And then we got uh, DOA 2, which is... Dead or Alive Dead 2. Dead or Alive 2. This is the Hardcore yeah, Edition, which is, hardcore. I, I think, I, I haven't played that one, but I do remember playing it on the Dreamcast, so I think it's just a buffed up version of the Dreamcast uh, installment, which is good. Uh, but, you know, like I said, a fighting game, especially a fighting game like that and Bloody War, uh, you want to make sure you keep that in your, in your collection uh, just to keep it diverse and fresh. You don't always want just Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. You want to mix it up a little bit. Yeah. So uh, that's what we have as far as the Sony PlayStation side of things. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. It's not going to be a long video because we didn't catch that much uh, this weekend. But we're going to go ahead and finish it off with the Nintendo side. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, finish off the video real quick with what we picked up for the Nintendo side of the collection. Uh, very excited uh, about these editions because uh, the half that I'm going to show you is the half that I picked up from the other side of the country. Uh, from a good friend of mine, uh, his name Rick. His name is Rick. Rick C. I call him because uh, I don't want to disclose his last name, but he is a West Coast connection. Uh, definitely got love for the West Coast. Uh, if you're watching the video, Rick, thank you. I appreciate it very much, and uh, you are contributing to the addiction, which is a good and bad thing. So let's go ahead and show you what I got from him uh, via trade. I was able to pick up a copy of. Darkwing Duck from Capcom. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I see some of the it. Google images of it, and I seen um, I think AVGN did a little bit of footage on it when he was comparing it to the Turbo Graphics uh, installment, <coughs> which was uh, the complete opposite of good, uh, from what he he uh, <laughs> told us and what we've seen in the video, of yeah. course. Um, but yeah, it's a Capcom game. I love Capcom. I love Disney. I will be trying it out. Um, hopefully it's as good as Rescue Rangers and um, DuckTales, but uh, we're going to go ahead and pop it in and find out. So, very excited about this. Rick, can't thank you enough, bro. And, do not forget I owe you, so you give me a call, give me a text, email, whatever you need to do, smoke signals, you know how we do. Make sure you get at me and I'll take care of you, bro. Alright, next, this one I picked up, I, I bought off of uh, one of my um, retro video game groups on social media. Uh, the guy hooked it up with a fair price, so I took care of him. I made sure I paid him on PayPal, even to him a little bit extra, just to say thank you. Uh, forgot his name, so if you are watching the video, I'm sorry, man. Go ahead and, and uh, go ahead and uh, hook yourself up with a shout out on the comment section if you uh, choose to. But he was able to uh, give me a copy of one of my childhood favorites, and that was Double Dragon 2 for the NES, of course. Uh, if you don't have this game in your collection, make it a priority. To do so this is one of the best um, side-scrolling uh, beat-em-ups that you ever gonna play in the NES bar none um, a lot of people might debate the first version but at least with this version you have the two-player option whereas the first uh, installment on the NES you only had that um, going on when you were fighting each other so very happy about this and uh, last but not least I will show you what I have for the Game Boy Advance section of the collection this again uh, was made possible by my good friend Rick C. So Rick C, thanks a lot, bro. Appreciate it. He was able to hook it up with some uh, Lord of the Rings games. Uh, they're not they're not in exact order or anything because I don't know uh, how they were released. Uh, the Lord of the Rings: The Return of the King. 
The Hobbit, the prelude to the Lord of the Rings, so that would probably be the first one in the series. And uh, last but not least, the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Rings. So I think this one came out second. And um, yeah, I like the Game Boy Advance games, especially now that I have um, uh, the 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 player on the Nintendo GameCube. So now I can just put on the GameCube and play those Game Boy Advance games right on the TV. So that's always a plus. So I was very happy when I picked that up and. Uh, Forgot what episode it was, but um, I I did uh, talk about that in one of my uh, episodes, probably three or four back. I don't know. I made so many damn episodes by now. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that handles my side. So let's go ahead and see what Romeo Retro picked up. All right, we got uh, three GameCube games here, and uh, the first one's gonna be uh, Mario Party Six. This is a classic for me. I used to play this all the time with my cousins. Uh, we all just huddled in a circle around the TV and just played. Yeah, I was late to the Mario Party yeah. party. I, I don't know, I just, I never got into it. Maybe it's because I went to parties for different reasons, yeah. but yeah, when I, <laughs> when I seen people play these games, you know, it's fun to watch, but you know, something that uh, for so, for whatever reason, I just, yeah. I never got into, but uh, there, those games hold pretty, pretty good value and there's a reason why. So I'm, I'm pretty sure they're enjoyable. What do you got next? And uh, next up is, my uh great game Godzilla destroy all monsters Ed, that's amazing that they made a Godzilla fighting game that everyone always wanted I'm yeah. pretty sure well that last because... Godzilla game that I played was on the NES and that was horrible it was horrible was it? and no because uh, look at look at the way this game is structured right and then the, the game amazing. no yeah you know it's a Godzilla game because you got monsters and they're fighting and they're destroying shit and and you know it's a monster fighting game but the one on the NES was it sucked because it was like you're playing chess right and then you're moving from one spot to another and you're fighting the same generic monsters I think uh, I've seen yeah. that game before. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's, it's it's night and day the comparison between that and that. And I'm not just talking about graphically. I'm just talking about in general. Gameplay. Yeah, gameplay, gameplay in general is just night and day. So I'm very happy we were able to add that to the collection. Yeah. And uh, my favorite childhood game of them all has to top it for me. Super Smash Brothers Melee was memory filling this game when I saw it him have it in his collection. Definitely. It was just just nostalgia hit. You know I'm not that old, but You feel old when yeah, you play feel this game. Old when I play this game. It brings me uh yeah. back to the That yeah. game I was late to to as well, but you know, Mario Party is is, is different because it's more uh you like saying happy go lucky yeah you know everybody can join themselves but super smash brothers people are going to get into it people are com yeah the competitive juices yeah. start flowing and that's that's the kind of environment i love being in because i'm a competitive person myself so it's it's cool to have a game like that where you could just uh pop in the four controllers on your gamecube or in most cases your wii and you could just go to work and 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 uh just have fun yeah you and your friends or you and your family so um that that pretty much covers what we picked up this week i like to thank you as always for coming to, to visit to watch to share the videos to subscribe of course if you're a new subscriber uh i try to i try to come out with more uh pickup videos but as of late it has not been happening as much because i'm focusing on the masterpiece retro series i i really like to uh share the games that i believe the love they deserve or don't have as much exposure in this part of the world as it does in others so uh, like i said before thanks for coming by thanks for visiting we appreciate it uh we're going to have featured more videos